Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Takeaway Tip Tuesday. I'm Ramona Remesat. I'm an intuitive guidance coach, angel therapy practitioner, speaker and author, and so glad to have you here so that I can share some tips, tools, and strategies that will help you to tap into, understand, and trust your inner guidance so that you can move forward fearlessly without worry, anxiety, and stress, whether that's in your business or your life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here. It is Tuesday, October 24th, and today is going to be part two of the three-part series that I'm sharing here with um, really digging more into this idea of how do we wrangle with fear? Because as I said last week, it doesn't go away. It will always be there. And what we need to do is to have a well-stocked toolkit so that when it shows up, we can reach into that toolkit and know what we can do to banish that fear when it comes up. And hi, Mandy, thank you for being here. Hello, hello, we got some people popping in. Feel free to say where you're from and who's on. Um, because you know you wanna have many tools, right? Because some days the one that you've been using for a while just might not resonate with you. It might be like, this just, I'm not feeling this, or it's not working, right? So you need to have multiple things that you can use, techniques. Hi, Christy, hi, hi, welcome. You need to have a lot of things at your disposal, right? Because fear, like I said, it pops up all the time. And in particular, it pops up when you are ready to really move forward on your path and your purpose, right? Especially if you've kind of been doing something for a while. Oh, Kentucky, love that. Yay. Oh, I'm so grateful too that somebody introduced you to me. Thank you for being here. That's fabulous. Um, you know, as we move forward on our purpose, we get excited about it, but then almost on the very heels of that, our head kicks in and starts to tell us all kinds of things and that fear shows up. And it is really sad because that is what prevents so many beautiful souls from moving forward, you know, and completing what it is that they are here to do. So that was kind of the inspiration for this whole series about what to do with fear. If you haven't seen the one from last week, please go back and watch part one. It's on this page, you probably have to scroll down to find it, but it is there. And today is part two. So today I'm gonna to share another technique with you um, because like I said, you wanna have a well-stocked toolkit, right? You can't just have one thing, you wanna have multiple things. Um, so this one is a multi-parter. This is actually something, um, it's a challenge to do for an entire week. So I hope you guys are up for the challenge. You can, if you are, you can, before I even share that with you, I wanna see if you're in. If you're all in, type all in in the comment box, okay? Before I reveal what this is about. It's not scary though, insofar as what you actually have to do. Where it can be scary is it is a challenge, right? It's a challenge to kind of get yourself out of your comfort zone, right? And like I always say, nobody did anything great by staying in their comfort zone. Mandy's all in, awesome, who else? Come on, Christy, are you gonna be all in with this? Yes, all right, there she's all in too. Awesome. Okay, so this exercise is called One Week Without an Ego, because why? Because all fear stems from our ego, right? That ego is the part of us that wants to keep us safe, wants to keep us in our comfort zone, and it's not all bad. I don't wanna be dissing the ego, it has a purpose, but if we are not careful, and we don't know, you know how to wrangle fear when it shows up, the ego will do its job too well and keep us so insulated in our comfort zone that we don't expand, we don't get out, we don't you know, fulfill our purpose and all of that, right? So ego, you know, it isn't all bad, but like I said, you wanna have a way of managing it. So this exercise is called One Week Without an Ego and it's a pretty simple concept. Each day for an entire week, you're gonna do something different and what you, uh, do each day is um, sort of narrowing in or, or working with a specific part of the ego and a specific area where we hold ourselves back. So you guys ready for this? I hope so. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some hearts. I need like a drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> um, and you may want, if you have a paper around, you may want to just jot a couple of notes because like I said, this is a multi-parter sort of exercise. Uh, but you can always come back. Thank you. There's some hearts, some thumbs up. Awesome. This is a, um, a recording will be on the page. You can go back and watch it if you want to. But uh, if you want to jot some notes, that's cool too. 
All right, so part one, day one. Oh, good, Christy's all ready. She's got her pen and paper, she's ready to go. Okay, and I have my notes because I don't wanna miss anything and <laughs> sometimes I get these mixed up. So day one is you're going to let go of the concern of what other people think. Ooh, right? Isn't that such a, like I, I think I was talking about this in last week's video, how that's like a prime directive. We are so programmed to be very concerned about what everybody else thinks. And sadly, that forces us to make choices and decisions sometimes that really aren't in alignment with our purpose. And then we get to be 40, 60, 80 years old and looking back and going, why did I let everybody else dictate my life instead of having the courage to do what made sense for me or what I really wanted to do? So we don't wanna do that to ourselves. So being able to let go of what other people think is really, really powerful and empowering, right? So day one of your one week without an ego, you're going to do something that you want to do without any worrying about what others may think. So whether you want to go change your hair, do something really fun with that, or you want to apply for a new job, or take a class that you've always been interested in, you're going to do that and tell people later, right? Um, don't maybe share everything with them because then you know, you're gonna get the, why are you doing that for? And, and, and then just hearing that feedback alone can be enough to stop you or make you think, yeah, why am I doing that, right? So you're going to take one day, your whatever day you wanna start on, uh, of your one week without an ego and do whatever the hell you want without caring and worrying about anything that anybody else thinks. Okay, so that's day one. Hopefully you guys can handle this. And I'm getting a little, um, you know, <laughs> tap on the shoulder to say, tell them this. Um, I would recommend you don't start on a Monday because Monday is a terrible day to start anything new. If you heard me, uh, I did a whole series about that on which days of the week are better to do certain tasks because every day of the week has an energetic, you know, an energy to it. So Mondays are really bad to start something new. Wednesday, though, would be a great day. So you may want to even start tomorrow. Look at how well that flows together, right? So you could even start this tomorrow. So that's day one. Day one is do something and don't worry about what other people think. Okay, day two, you're going to, this day two is all about getting away of the fear of asking for help, right? We get into our heads about asking for help. We're like, well, you know, if I ask for help and you know, then I'm gonna owe somebody something back and then that's just like too much work, right? So. Day two, ask for something, whether you need help with picking up some shopping, you need somebody to babysit your kids, you need um, somebody who can help you with something to do with your business if you have one. Um, whatever it is, you're going to go out and ask for help. And I want you to get into the habit of doing this and practicing this because Nobody goes it alone, right? Um, you know, especially if you're pursuing something in terms of building a business or pursuing your passion or whatever that is. Uh, I will tell you guys, nobody does that by themselves. They, all the successful people out there have help. They have mentors, they have assistants, they have coaches, they have whatever. And you know, they source help when they need it because we can't be good at everything, right? I'm good at this stuff. I'm not an IT person, I'm not an accountant, I'm not whatever, right? So when I need help in certain areas, I get help, I source help. We don't do it alone. So I want you to, on day two, really uh, push yourself to ask somebody for help with something. Okay, hopefully that's not too scary. <laughs> I'm not scaring you off just yet. Uh, so that is what you can do on day two. Any questions so far? I'm gonna just jot, uh, take a quick peek at my notes so I make sure I'm giving you the right days of everything. Um, okay, it doesn't look like any questions are coming in, that's awesome. All right, day three's task is to stop comparing or competing with others. Ooh, that's a good one too. You know, f social media is great, Facebook is great, but we tend to be scrolling through our newsfeed or Instagram feed or whatever it is and we're like, oh, look what they're doing, and oh, look what this person is doing, and oh, why am I not there? And you know, we get into this comparison thing, right? Which really, you know, makes us kind of beat ourselves up internally, 
and it's kind of this vicious spiral that goes around and around, right? Um, and again, then it keeps makes us shrink back a little bit, right? We go, oh, I could never be as good as that person, or you know, why am I not as good as that, or whatever, right? So even though we might be fired up and pursuing our purpose, when we compare with what other people are doing and we feel like we're not meeting the mark, it makes us shrink back a little bit and it allows that fear to get in the door and be like, see, I told you so, what do you think you're doing? You know, why are you doing this, right? And, and it can stop you dead in, the tra in your tracks. So really day three is about getting out of that competing, comparing and just really acknowledging yourself, your accomplishments, where you've gotten to, you know, sometimes we're so focused on the finish line, you know, where we want to get to and we have like our eyes on the prize. We never stop and turn around and look over our shoulder and go and see how far we've come. We're like, holy crap, look at all this other stuff I've done, right? We don't do that. We're just like, oh, well, I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I'm not over there and I'm not there yet, right? So forget about that and just, you know, appreciate what you have and where you are and how far you've come on day three. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, all right, we're going to move on to day four. Day four is really easy. It's um, stop that constant striving for more, 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 more. I need more of this. I need more of that. I need, you know, whatever, right? It's like kind of like the keeping up, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and all of that, right? So on day four, you're just going to appreciate the little things. Right? Like I said, maybe you're not there yet, but how far have you come and what do you have now and all of those things and really get into a, a space of appreciation for yourself, for others, um, because, you know, we don't get enough of that, right? We really don't, especially for ourselves. Uh, when was the last time you said, I appreciate myself because of whatever, right? We don't do that. <laughs> So day four is really about that appreciation. You can even make it a game. If you have a spouse or a partner or family, at dinner time, you sit down and you exchange. What do you appreciate about that other person? And go back and forth and do it a few times. Go through and maybe say three things that you appreciate about each other. It is such a wonderful boost and we don't get enough of that, right? Instead, we get the criticisms. We get, though, you didn't do that. You didn't take the trash out, <laughs> right? But we don't get, you know, I really appreciate um, the you know, all the hard work that you did because this is an amazing dinner or something like that, right? So we want to get into that space of appreciation, which is also like an antidote, like a sprinkle of poison to fear, okay? So I want to share that with you. On day five, wait, before I get going, any questions so far on these on these one to four? Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm not speeding through them lickety split. <laughs> um... Okay, good. I'm glad that's making sense. As people are popping in too, feel free to say who's on. Let me know who's watching. I would love to see who's here. We have Mandy all the way from Hamilton. We have Christy from Kentucky. Uh, Mandy says, I was having a hard time blogging, but lately I've been blogging once a week. It's something I can appreciate. Awesome, Mandy. I'm giving you a big round of applause because, you know, that can be hard, right? And even if you know me, I have not really been up on my blog lately either so <laughs> but you know what I don't beat myself up about it right um, that's the other thing sometimes we're like when we feel like we are setting a goal I'm gonna blog once a week and we get away from that then we get into this whole thing again about beating ourselves up and see I see I told you you weren't gonna do it and you know all those my things in our head will start chattering away right and we want to block that out so if you get away from it no, you can get back to it. Don't get into the trap of beating yourself up about it. But I'm glad that you can appreciate that about yourself. And we appreciate that because when we don't show up for the people who need us, they're missing out, right? So remember, it's not about you or me. That's a little extra bonus tip I want to just plop in here since we're on this topic. Um, you know, ego is all I, 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 me, 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 right? So sometimes when you're scared to do something, it's because you're worried about looking silly or, you know, thinking that you're a fraud or whatever that might be. That's I, I, me, me focused. Think of it this way. If you don't step into who you are supposed to be and what it is you are here to give in the world, you're denying all the people out there who need what you have to give, right? So it isn't about you. And that's something you can even put up on a sticky note, right? It isn't about me. And that will remind you that in those moments of fear, you got to get over yourself because people need you. Christy is saying, learning to be gentle with myself is the biggest thing I'm trying to do currently as I know I can be super critical. We all are like that, Christy. Yes, absolutely. It is a hard thing, but 
you know, learn, um, recognition of that is the first step. So that's great. So congratulations that you've recognized that in yourself. And, you know, when you find yourself getting into that critical mode, um, you know, say something like, I love and appreciate myself, right? Or even go into a mirror and say that into your eyes. Look deeply into your eyes in a mirror and say, I love and appreciate myself. And this is hard work for a lot of people. Uh, you may have to do it in steps. Some people can't even get the words out, let alone standing in front of the mirror. And if you do that and you get emotional, go with it. Don't stifle it because that's part of healing. It's part of something that needs to shift within you. And, um, you know, that is something that you can use when you find that you're spiraling down into that critical phase. Um, all right, so let's move on to day five, which is combating lack of presence, right? We live in a crazy world. And as I said at the beginning of this year, when I did my 2018 for art, see, I'm already, I'm already thinking of 2018. <laughs> Sorry, when I did my 2017 forecast readings for clients, this message was coming up repeatedly and all I kept hearing was twirly, swirly year, twirly, swirly. And that's the energy that this year has had. It's been a twirly, swirly year, sometimes literally in terms of hurricanes and all kinds of things that have been going on, right? So um, when we're in that energy and we're in stuff going on, there is that lack of presence because we're just trying to process everything that's going around us, that's swirling around us. So on day five, you're going to want to spend time being very focused in the now, right? And appreciating, again, your present circumstances, surroundings, the people around you, everything that's in your life now without worrying about the fo forward focus, right? Of like, oh, I'm, you know, when I get here, I'll be happy or, you know, back in the day, everything's great or, you know, so not looking at past, not looking at the future, but being focused in the present and the now. And even while you are doing things like, you know, making dinner and you're chopping your carrot, think of like, I'm chopping this carrot, it is orange, it, you know, whatever. Or, you know, as you're cooking, you're like, I'm smelling this garlic and onion and, and you know, really being in the moment, not as you're cooking dinner, you're already thinking about all the to-dos on your list or, you know, what has to come later or um, all of that, right? So you wanna be really in the moment and practicing a little bit of mindfulness through the day and really think, you know, even as you're breathing, breathing in, I'm aware I'm breathing in, breathing out, I'm aware I'm breathing out, right? And you can even just sit for two, three, five minutes, um, breathing like that and using that mantra, right? To just get you in the moment. I know it's, it's difficult to go through a whole entire day being like so zoned in, but if you can pick some moments through the day where you're committed to really focusing in, um, that would be great too. Even as you're eating food, we don't really taste anything anymore. We're like, you know, takes you two hours to cook the meal and everybody's up and gone from the table in 10 minutes, right? So it's like, at, like really take the time to savor, to enjoy your food. Uh, that is something that I can also recommend to really help in this day of being present with everything. Um, I would even challenge you to start that today. You know, when you go off now and have your next meal or a snack, really savor that, really enjoy it, and 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 just see what comes from that. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense for day five. We're moving on to day six. Day six, you're going to relinquish that need to be right. Now, not everybody falls into this trap, right? Some people do though. Some people are really, you know, this is my son. <laughs> He's 12, going on 13, and he debates everything, everything. It's exhausting, but it's wonderful and beautiful at the same time because I don't want him to take everything at face value, right? That's what I teach you guys. You know, don't listen to everything you hear um, unless you are checking in with your own inner guidance and reconciling that and then, you know, making sure that you're making that choice or decision from the right place, not just blindly following what the gurus say or this expert says or so-and-so says or whatever, okay? So that can be a good thing, but at the same time, you don't always need to be right, right? So if you find yourself by chance in an argument or a debate, be willing to say, you know what, you're right, and just back off. And you'll find that it makes you feel really, really good. So that is something that you can practice on day six um, to really kind of help you like relinquish that, you know, that also comes from an ego place and a place of fear. You may not think that's a fear-based thing, but that need to be right does because 
we have that fear that if we aren't asserting ourselves, we may look a certain way or whatever, right? So it kind of goes back really to that base subconscious thing of being worried what other people think of us, right? So that's where that comes from. And finally, the big one on day seven, letting go of the should. <laughs> the should or shouldn't or can't. So you're going to be very mindful on day seven of the words you're using, okay? And the vocabulary and the sentences that you're speaking. And start instead with I can or I will or I won't and I choose not to, right? Instead of the I can't or I should or shouldn't, right? We should all over ourselves is what we do. You know, I should do this, I should do that, right? And other people do that to us too. You should, right? And how many people ended up in careers because somebody said, oh, you're good in math, you should be an accountant, right? Or whatever, you know, oh, you're great with kids, you should be a teacher, right? And then all these people go off in these careers and then hit, you know, their 40s and wake up one day and go, I hate my life. Why the heck am I doing this, right? And we've all kind of been there. <laughs> so it's much better if you tune into your inner guidance and make your choices from that place instead of the shoulds, right? Or shouldn'ts or you can'ts or whatever. Does that make sense, guys? Um, okay, so any questions, any clarifications? I hope you're all still in. You promised me at the beginning, you said all in before you even knew what it was about. So hopefully you guys are still in and you're gonna commit to doing this. And oh, yay, I'm getting some hearts. That's awesome, great, thank you. Uh, so I would love for you to, to really jump into this and really do it like a one week challenge. Like I said, it's one week without an ego. Good, Mandy is still in, fantastic. Christy is all in still, awesome. Um, share this out, wouldn't this be fun to do with others? I think so, and when I do my Align With Your Path and Purpose intensive with clients, where we dive really deep onto that, um, we this is one of the exercises I have them do, and they, they get into um, the community that we have of all the graduates from that intensive, and people share their experiences um, oh, thank you, Christy. Christy's on that spiritual journey. Hey, we're all in it together, sister. I'm so glad to have you here, and um, I'm super excited for your journey as well, so I'm so glad you're here. Um, so yeah, if you think that you would like to have some support as you do One Week Without an Ego, share this video out. Challenge your friends, your family. Say, hey, I'm going to do this. Who's in with me? And you can compare notes and see, you know, what did you find was more challenging, what was maybe a little bit easier, see if you guys are on the same page. It's just an interesting um, sort of experiment, if you will, to kind of go through with other people. And um, it'll kind of pinpoint, you know, where your trigger points are as far as ego goes, right? You might not care so much about um, needing to be right, but you might be a big comparison person, right? Or something like that. So once you know Again, what your kind of trigger points are, then you can stay more focused on that and start to shift things on that, right? You can't fix something if you don't know it's broken in the first place. I'm not saying you're broken, but you get my analogy, right, of what I'm talking about. So when you know something isn't working optimally, that's when you can step in and say, okay, I know I can do something about this. I can tweak this or I can be more aware of it. So when I catch myself in that, I can turn it around. I'm not going to get sucked into that vortex right, of the fear, or, you know, get so into comparing that you just, you shut down completely, you know, you go into like, I'll never be as good as them, and why am I even trying, and you know, your head just starts da 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 and, and you know, it can really slow you down, and if not slow you down, just stop you altogether, we don't want that, because like I said, the world needs more people out there fully on, on their path and their purpose and living it completely. So that's that's what I'm helping you guys to do. So um, any questions, comments? Are you guys gonna drag in some of your friends and family and get them involved? I would love, love for you to do that. And what I would love the most is if you'd come back here in a week and share or share as you're going through that. This is again, safe space. Uh, feel free to comment. I'm going to keep this video pinned to the top of the page so it's easy to find. And then you can come back on here and post below and say, hey, you know, I did day one and this is what happened. Or I'm on day three. So far it's going okay. Or I'm on day five. This is really hard. 
<laughs> right? Or whatever it is that, uh, oh good, Mandy's sharing the video. Thank you, Mandy. You know, when we get shares, Facebook likes shares. The more it sees shares, the more it's like, oh, people need this information. And it starts to put this in more people's news feeds. And I do think this is something people need more of because the fear is shutting down too many people, like I said, and everything you want is right there on the other side of fear. We gotta bust through that fence, right? And that's what I'm here to do. I'm like the little, you know, hands in the small of your back, giving you the nudge. Come on, come on, you can do it, come on, right? So thank you for sharing, Mandy. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and as well, Christy, thank you too for sharing. That's going to be awesome. So yeah, so post in a week or post as you go through it. I really want to see how you're going, you know, how it's going for you. Uh, so I can encourage you and, and have you keep going with that. Thank you for the hearts. That's awesome. I'm so glad this is, uh, making sense. It's resonating. And next week I'm going to be back with the third part of this three part series of how to go from fear to fab. And, um, so I hope you'll, you'll be here with me for that. Let me just double check on the time for that, um, because it may also have to be at a new time. Let me just quickly check. Um, oh, we're going to be back at the regular time. It's Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween <laughs> next Tuesday. I should wear a costume. Oh, I'm excited. You're going to have to tune in to see what costume I have. I bet you'll never guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mandy already knows the hardest one for you is going to be asking for help, but you're going to do it. Good. Push yourself. And that's why I want to have the sense of community so others can push you. You know, if you know the one that's going to be hard for you, tell people up front, say, this one's going to be hard for me. I'm going to need some support. I might need a little gentle nudge, you know, to do it. Keep me on track with this so that I don't back down, right? And maybe, you know, pairing up even from here on the, on, uh, the Facebook group or Facebook page, um, get, a, get an accountability partner, right? Say, hey, you want to team up? Let's do this for each other. We'll check in with each other and we'll kind of nudge each other and gently support one another as we go through this. So that would be great. So next week we will be back on Halloween Tuesday. That will be at 1.30 Eastern time, 11.30 mountain, my time, or 10.30 Pacific time. So make sure you're back here for uh, part three of how to go from fear to fab. And I'm excited that you guys are starting to stock up your toolkit with some of these tools that you can use to really help you because like I said, fear doesn't go anywhere. It's always going to be knock, knock, knocking at the door. And, um, you know, you don't have to panic when that happens. You'll be like, aha, I, uh, I know what to do with you. <laughs> so um, I'm glad that you guys were here today. Thank you so much. Any last questions? No, no, no. Yes, no. Well, thank you so much for watching. And like I said, share this out. Encourage other people to do this challenge with you. And report back. Let me know how it's going for you. Um, Mandy, I'll be rooting for you <laughs> as you get through that day of asking for help. And, um, you know, that could be help in the form of time. You know, maybe you need somebody to help you and to sort of, you know, give up some of their time. Um, or maybe it's an item that you need or uh, some kind of a, you know, actual physical thing that you need help with. So, yeah, there's lots of ways that we can reach out and ask for help, right? And that can even be sourcing help to move you forward in a business. Like I said, if you own a business, um, right? Maybe you're starting out and you need a business card and you need a logo developed or something like that. And you're like, ah, I'm really not a graphics designer. You know, how, how do I put this business card together? Um, you know, there's lots of inexpensive options out there. There's Fiverr where you can get um, logos and other kind of graphic stuff to actually, my son who's 12, last night I walked into his bedroom, I'm like, what are you doing? He's <laughs> working on his computer. And he's like, I'm creating like a, like a YouTube banner, custom YouTube banner for somebody. He, he's gone on Fiverr as a whatever person that people can pay him to develop this stuff for him. So <laughs> my son, little entrepreneur, is out there, you know, as a Fiverr, whatever, uh, support supplier, I guess you'd call it, to create these things for people. So, you know, it, it's it's available, right? You just have to kind of do some digging and, and ask around, right? And that can even be part of asking for help too, asking around. You know, I need help with this. Who do you recommend? 
or have you done this before or you know who can I talk to and that's why Facebook is great because you can put something like that on Facebook right I need somebody to design my logo who do you know right and just put it out there and see what people come back with um, so there's lots of ways that we can ask for help yeah fiverr.com Mandy um, I think I double check I, I don't think it's a double R at the end I think it's just fiverr.com and uh, yeah so you know you can you can go on there and there's tons of support for that uh, you don't have to be hiring out you know fancy dancy graphics person who charges you know multi figures by the hour <laughs> right <laughs> awesome I'm glad that, that makes sense for you guys you're getting a thumbs up some hearts and of course you can even go to something like um, Vistaprint you know and they have pre pre-created templates where you don't even need a specific logo if you don't if you know unless you want something very specific um, they have beautifully designed things that you can just plunk in your name your your contact information you're ready to go moo.com moo.com is also a great source of um, you know that kind of stuff marketing materials and they're gorgeous their business cards are absolutely stunning and they're neat because you can create them so that every card is a little bit different. They don't all have to be the same either. So that's kind of cool. But you are limited to the templates that they provide. So it just depends what you're looking for. But there's lots of ways for that. So anyways, we kind of got off on that tangent. But yeah, um, have a great week with this, guys. Have fun. Challenge yourself, but make it fun. And if you're getting stuck, make sure you come back on this page and let me know. And, and I can provide you some extra support. And like I said, get an accountability partner, right? Really, because you know, it's easy for life to get in the way. You can say, right now I'm all in, I'm gonna do this, and then off you go and stuff happens and then you forget, right? So it's nice if you can team up with an accountability buddy who can make you accountable. <laughs> so that's it for today, everybody. I'm so glad that you joined me. And like I said, tune in next week. We'll be back at the regular time, which is 1.30 Eastern time. 11.30 Mountain, 10.30 Pacific, it's Happy Halloween, and I might just have to dig out a costume and, you know, come on here in a full, some kind of something, and uh, <laughs> so that should be really fun. I love Halloween. All right, guys, make it a great day, and thank you again for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Have a good week, everybody.